Good evening. Here is the world news from BGI TV, Baba Bagede Imo TV. I am Moriwe Rebila Lawal. First are the major headlines for the world news. YSDM calls for UN, US, and international community involvement. We are building people's confidence to confront bandits, Casina government speaks. Countries granting visas to Nigerian youth seeking green pastures. Appeal court ruling in Nabekano must not be released, may yet Allah won. Why 101 repentant Boko Haram terrorists were moved from Kirikiri prison? On as strike, final year medical students taunt food vendor dies. On foreign, Ghana deports 16 Nigerians over cyber crimes. And on sports, 2023 Women's World Cup, Super Falcons face top draw after being seeded in weakest group. Now the news in detail. It's a story the Yoruba self-determination movement has denounced the silence of the president of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, to the its request for the negotiation on a terminable for Yoruba to exist from Nigeria and form their own nation. In a letter sent to him on August 6, 2022, the movement listed, among many other reasons, the present ongoing insecurity of life and property in Yoruba land. It then called for urgent dialogue with the Nigerian government on the group's proposals for the peaceful exit of Yoruba people from Nigeria. The letter emphasized the importance of exiting Nigeria, partly to stave off a potential explosion of reprisals in response to the relentless terrorism, kidnappings, extortions, mindless killings, and rape of women and children by Fulani ethnic groups and Islamic State West African proxies if swap. The movement warned the government of imminent descents into all out war in the country if frustrated. And beaten Yoruba group who are being harassed by the state security services and terrorized by Fulani elders, lost faith in the ability of the political leaders and the movement to achieve a negotiated exit from Nigeria for the Yoruba. In a statement denouncing President Buhari's insensitivity to the plight of the Yoruba and the risk of a second civil war, the movement painted a picture of the dire situation in the country and called for urgent attention of the United Nations, the United States and the international community to Yoruba people's demand for self-determination as enunciated in the Charter of United Nations. In the letter to the General Buhari, YSDM said that Yoruba people are determined to leave Nigeria. Towards this end, over 5 million Yoruba people at home and in the diaspora have appended their signature to a petition calling for Yoruba exit from Nigeria. They fully subscribe to the notion of the rights to full autonomy or self-government in matters relating to their internal and local affairs, as well as ways and means of financing their autonomous functions. To the next story, the Casino State Government says the new approach to tackling banditry adopted by the government has been recording success as peace was returning to the states. Ibrahim Ahmed Casino, the special advisor to Governor Aminu Maseri on security matters, said on Friday that part of the strategy is building people's confidence to confront the bandits or report to security agencies without fear. We have realized that what we are facing in Casina is community banditry. Most of the bandits and their locations are known, Mr. Ahmed Casina told journalists. We understood the dynamics of a threat which made it easier for us to deal with the problem and identify the factors responsible and what needs to be done to nip the problem in the north, the governor's aid added. Enunciating on the confidence building strategy, Mr. Ahmed Kassina said, will fight reach out to the communities and develop their capacity in intelligence gathering, community policing, and community effort. He added that the state government had trained 1,100 highly educated community vigilante corps assisting their communities in surviving. Mr. Ahmed Kassina pointed out that through this approach, members of various mandatory affected communities are rising to their responsibilities by not waiting for the security forces. Moving on to the next story, Amosun disclosed uh, inf an information while speaking with BBC Yoruba. According to the UN's Department of Economic and Social Affairs, the number of international migrants from Nigeria in 2020 
The latest year for which figures are available was 1.7 million, up from 990,000 a decade earlier. A former governor of Ogun State and chieftain of the ruling All Progressive Congress, Senator Ibikunle Amosun, says the mass exit from Nigeria is disheartening. Amosun disclosed this while speaking with BBC Yoruba, according to the U.S. Department of Economic and Social Affairs. British statistics show that in 2019, the year before COVID struck, about 14,000 UK study and work visas were issued to Nigerian nationals. That number, which includes dependents, almost quadrupled in 2021. Skilled workers from the healthcare sectors were the largest recipients with more than 16,000 visas out of about 22,000 granted since January 2021. In Canada, more than 15,000 Nigerians were granted permanent residence in 2021, compared to about 4,400 five years prior. What scares me most in all this is the proliferation of immigration. Foreigners would not fix our nation for us if all our citizens should leave the country. I am saying the country is granting visas to our youths as wicked because they are not considering the origin nation from which their prospective labor force is coming from. If you're just joining, you are watching the world news from BGI TV. Next to come. Pen Fuleni Group, Mayeti Allah Kautel Ori, has expressed dissatisfaction with the appeal court's verdict with discharge in Amde Kanu of terrorism charges preferred by the federal government. The group insists Mr. Kanu is a terrorist and threat to national security, urging the Buhari regime not to release him from detention. Saleh Al Hassan, Mayeti's national secretary, termed the appeal court judgment a miscarriage of justice, stressing they shouldn't make the mistake of releasing Kanu. We are very sad with this judgment. How can a terrorist like Inamde Kanu that have organized the killing of innocent patrol women, children, security personnel, is a rush against the country to be discharged by the appeal court? Mr. Al Asin told our reporters on Friday. Mr. Al Asin for the charge of federal government to appeal the ruling. The federal government has revealed the reason one of one convicted Boko Haram terrorists and those awaiting trial were moved from Kirikiri Maximum and Medium Centers in Lagos states to the Deradic radicalization group camp. Niger News report that several reactions have trailed a media report that the terrorists were part of a swap deal with the terrorists for the release of travelers who were abducted in Kaduna on March 28. The source disclosed that the terrorists had spoken about their release happening before a new administration took over, adding that the released terrorists were aware of the recent Kujie jailbreak. Speaking with the House Rep. Correspondent on Friday, the Chief of the First Staff, CDS, General Loki Irabo, said the convicted terrorists were moved from Kirikiri Prison to the camp for onward reintegration into society. Irabo made a disclosure after the National Security Council, NSC, meeting at Aso Villa in Abuja, presided over by President Mohamed Buhari. Irabo said the ex-terrorists were moved from the custodial centers to Operation Safe Corridor, which was established to receive repentant terrorists. The CDS added that the convicted insurgents are currently undergoing the process of de-radicalization at the center before they are reintegrated into the society. Moving on to the next story as regards the ASU strike. Usman Awakabimi, an undergraduate who became a food vendor during the academic staff union of university's ASU strike, has passed away. The disease was a medicine and surgery final year student of Usman Dalfodio University, Sokoto, UDUS. Aoka Mimi opened a food outlet in the diplomat area of Sokoto. He died on Wednesday after a brief illness. The death was confirmed to Nan on Saturday by the chairman of the 24th century entrepreneur of Umar Idris. Idris said the disease had been buried according to Islamic rights in his hometown in Rimi local government area of Kastina. Abu Karimi was described as a humble person and a dedicated student and entrepreneur. In September, the disease told Nan that he ventured into the food business due to the prolonged ASU strike. The late student also recalled that he used the COVID-19 lockdown to start an egg and chicken distribution business. Now to the foreign story. No fewer than 16 Nigerians have been deported by Ghana government over an allegation of involvement in cyber crimes in the country. The controller of the semi command, Nigeria Immigration Service, Dr. Chiku Emeka, at a conference on Friday said most of the deportees left Nigeria through illegal route. He added that some of the deportees were into the criminal activities in order to get rich. 
The controller said the young Nigerians were deceived or internationally went out of the country in search of greener pasture. Ghana's Financial and Intelligence Agency accused them of cyber crimes, but from our preliminary investigations, we discovered that some of them were lured into these criminal activities due to the get rich syndrome our youth are developing. Some of them are victims in the sense that they were deceived that they can make money if they leave Nigeria. Unfortunately, they don't get the actual thing they bargained for in Ghana. Further investigations also show that most of them left the country through illegal route or through the sea to the other West African countries. We also discovered that most of them traveled without the new travel document, so when they got to Ghana, they became prey to the authorities. Now to the final story, sports. The Super Falcons of Nigeria should expect a tough draw for the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup after they were placed in Pot 4 of the weekend's qualifiers. Around the Waldron side could be pitted against heavyweight like the reigning world champions, the United States of America, Brazil, Canada, Netherlands, Japan, England, or France. Other African representatives, South Africa, Morocco, and Senegal, are also placed in Pot 4. The Super Falcons have made it to the knockout stage of the Women's World Cup twice, in 1999 and at the last edition hosted by France three years ago. The Falcons surrendered their African titles this summer to the Bayana Bayana of South Africa. They have lost their last five games, including friendlies against USA and Japan. That concludes the world news from BGI TV. Before we go, some quick advice. YSDM calls for UN, US and international community involvement. We also brought to you, we are building people's confidence to confront bandits, Castina government boasts. And finally, 2023 Women's World Cup, Super Falcons face tough group after being seated in weakest Port 4. For more updates on YouTube, our handle is Baba Bagede Imo TV. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell. Select option all to access our broadcast. On Facebook, Bagede Imo with Alawiye Adibayo. Please like and follow the page. On Instagram, Bagede Imo underscore 22. For other placement of goods and services, coverage of events and function, please dial the phone number streaming on your screen for advert placement only. Thank you for watching. I am Mori Rebila Nawal. Good evening. Oh, na -na -na. If you want to know what's going on in city, or you want to listen to the latest news and gist, no stress, oh. Just into BGI TV, BGI TV.